Hi there, great tens, Mr. H here, and this is your 10 minute game plan for Cat Paper 2 The Theory. Now, I'm going to walk you through the paper layout, what to focus on, where marks are lost, and of course, how exactly to secure the top marks. So, let's dive in. So, paper 2 is around two hours long, usually has around eight questions to it as well. Each question builds on the last. They work on recalling, understanding, and applying. Remember that. Because this is not just a memorizing story. You have to become a digital problem solver if you really want to succeed in this paper. So let's look at question number one. Question number one is usually multiple choice. And this can range from five questions to around 10 questions for this multiple choice section. Now question one asks a lot of foundational knowledge. So hardware, software, terms, the basics of computers. This is what question one is really about. And so if you've revised your definitions and acronyms, this is an easy win. <clears throat> so for question one, I'd go and revise my basics. You know, things like the CPU, the SSD, the monitor, um, emails, you know, key terms and acronyms. And this is why I'm encouraging you to go into the description here. There's a link that takes you to past papers. Go and try out a few of those papers and make sure you see where this is all coming from and what you need to know for that question. And I'll give you one or two examples. Um, in multiple choice, you could be asked, what's the main function of a computer? And then they have a few options for you. You could be asked, which type of memory stores data temporarily? And even what could cause a computer to slow down? Like I say, these are just a few examples. Now, as we move on to question number two, please remember what I'm giving you here is, again, not the blueprint that it's going to be in this exact order, but this is generally what I've seen in a lot of papers. And for question number two, it's usually the match the column. Now, here you need to know your terms. You need to understand either it's going to be the acronyms or just general computing terms. Here you'll see topics like file management, hardware, software, and storage. And so this section just wants to see how well you can actually link concepts together. My tip here, go through column B first. Check out all the terms before you even look at the definitions, right? Make sure you understand those terms and then go to the definitions. It's going to help. Okay, I see that guy's back again. So let me show you what I mean when I say we're looking at hardware, software, networks, storage, linking them all together. Let me give you a few examples of what you can get in a match the column. So typical examples down column B, where you're looking at the terms would be like your SSD, your HDD, your CPU, uh, OCR for our OCR software, a monitor, a motherboard, uh, DPI, biometrics. Uh, they even at times throw in a few practical terms, right, from your practical work and expect you to know that here. Now, question three, you can either get a true or false. And in true or false, please remember, if it's true, you just answer true. If it's false, you need to indicate that it's false and change the relevant word that made it false. Okay, that's how with these two, you get one mark. The other option you could get is a statement and they give you two terms, or two words, and you need to choose the correct one. Again, here are two examples. A router or scanner is used to connect devices in a network and manage data traffic. So you'd have to choose which one of the two. Here's another one. Bluetooth or HDMI allows wireless communications over short devices. You're going to choose one or the other. And I'm not giving you the answer. Now we've generally got section A out of the way. Let's dive in deeper as we go to question three. And this is usually around the topic of system technologies. Now I'll say this from the onset. This is one of the biggest sections and you need to know your hardware. Guys, this is why I have created the computer parts. And you'll see the two um, thumbnails up here. The computer parts videos that takes you through all those computer components. You need to know your hardware. You need to know the difference between your RAM, your ROM, your hard drive, your mechanical traditional hard drive, and your solid state drive. I cover all of these things in the computer parts video. You need to know the difference between your HDMI cable and your VGA cable. Like, what does the one do? What does the other do? Your information processing cycle comes up here related to hardware. And you are going to get scenarios as well. And then they're going to expect you to take your hardware and your software knowledge, your, your computer component knowledge, and apply it to that scenario. And this is a very important tip. When you answer 
answer to the scenario. So here are a couple of questions that they could ask you. They could ask you, for example, what is a file extension? What does a file extension do? They could ask you to explain the difference between input and output in terms of devices. What's the difference between those devices? Your, like I said, the difference between your hard drive and your SSD, here's a scenario, why would I replace my traditional hard drive with a SSD? In trying to make my laptop faster, why would I think of upgrading my memory first? The booting process, convergence, and then also being able to give some advice when it comes to um, upgrading your computer as well. You want full marks for this section? Please use full sentences. I say again, full sentences. And so the next question usually deals with internet and network technologies. Now this is going to encompass everything that you've done. Um, what is a network? What is the internet? What is an intranet? Key question. Key question. In order for me to connect to the internet, what do I need? So I need a router. What does the router do? What is its main function? Again, in the computer parts video, we dealt with this. Your wireless access point, your network cables, like your UTP and your STP. What about your fiber optic cable? How does it work? What's the difference between UTP and STP cabling? You know, how do I protect myself online? So all of these questions deal with the internet and your networks. Again, what is your typical model in a network, your client server model? What is a server? How does a server function? What services does it offer? And then obviously the advantages and disadvantages of which we know around two of each. Not forgetting any communication tools that we use via the internet, WhatsApp, Skype, and any of these social media um, platforms. Having said that, know what e-communication and e-commerce are. And the age old question, the difference between a router and a switch. And again, the computer parts video covers all of this. You can also get questions on the cloud. So web-based applications, cloud-based applications, standalone applications. What is meant by file synchronization? And then how do you choose an ISP based on your needs? So again, there can be a lot of scenarios and in this section you can even get the specs of a PC. So I'll have up here the typical specs of a PC and then they can ask you questions based on that. Our next question deals with social implications. So we're looking at the human side of technology, ethics, privacy, health, and the environment. No terms like popia, the Poppy Act, plagiarism, privacy, and even e-waste. Here's another tip. Always give an example, not just the term. So in this section, we could be talking about password security, also staying safe online. We can look at the computer environment itself, how we are interacting with it. Ergonomics can come in, right? Remember that term? RSI, a repetitive strain injury. Again, terms like fishing and farming, uh, automation in the workplace. Our next question is around information management. And again, if you don't get the same breakdown in your final paper, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get these maybe in different types of sections, um, but this is the work that they'll generally be testing you and examining you on. Information management is here to test your ability to manage information. So finding information, researching, processing it, and then turning it into something that you're going to present for people. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> this sounds like a pet. So especially for those of you in the DBE in grade 10, you would have done a pet. So a lot of the questions here are going to be PET related. How did you go about finding information? Did you conduct a survey? What sort of questions did you send out? Were they open-ended questions? Were they close-ended questions? In researching, how do you deal with all the information that you find? What is information overload? So I want you to think about the PET and I'm gonna give you this process because the IEB learners have not done a PET yet. So our process is to do what? Is to define the problem, collect data, and then process it using various ICT tools. And of course, present it ethically. So it's find, process, present, and evaluate. That's what this section is testing you on. So here's one or two typical questions that can come up. You are busy with a research task. You need to find a lot of information on a particular topic. Then they say to you, explain the difference between information and data. Here's when they deal with information overload. 
So you as a learner, you've gone online, you've gone to find information, and there's a myriad of different websites with a whole lot of information. How do you sift through the results that you are finding and that you are searching for in order to get what you really want? And then we move on to solution development. This is a very simple question because this one really deals with your prac work. And for good measure, they throw in a bit of troubleshooting as well. So here's a question. Someone is trying to print, they've clicked print, nothing's come out, what do you do? You've got a Word document, you've sent it to someone who has an older version of Word, it's coming up scrambled when they open it up, what could be the problem? A user says that their laptop is freezing and running slow, what could you possibly check? And with this, they can even ask you for either software or hardware related answers. And then lastly, we've got what's known as our integrated scenario. So this is where they take everything you've learned, hardware, software, networks, all of that, and they can put it into one big question, um, one big scenario and ask you then questions based on that. So let me give you one, which has come up before, video conferencing. You have your school hall, they wanna set up a whole video conference to interview someone um, that's overseas, you've got about 40 or 50 people that need to attend, they need to be able to speak to the person online, that person needs to be able to speak to you, they need to be able to see one another, it needs to be recorded, what do you need? What sort of questions do you think can come up? Are there gonna be internet related questions? Yes, hardware with a webcam or camera, laptop that you're gonna need, the specs that you're going to need, the screen that you're gonna be using, the projector. How's the projector gonna to connect to the laptop? How's the webcam gonna to connect to the laptop? How are the people gonna be able to speak and be heard over that connection, right? All of those type of things. That is what's usually in your integrated scenario. There are so many different scenarios to choose from. So here's, here's my tip. Take some of your work, take a particular module, right? Pop it into ChatGPT and ask it to generate a scenario-based question from that work. Definitely helps. It's gonna give you a lot of different scenarios, but it will help. Now, please bear in mind, different scenarios will then ask different questions of you. Like that one was on video conferencing. If you've got a scenario where you're setting up a new computer lab, right, and you've got a set of PCs from scratch, then do you think we're gonna have more network-related? Yes, network cards, cables, um, antivirus, the Windows versions, the, the specs of the PC, all those things. So your integrated scenario draws on everything we've done. And so this is why I'm saying to you, use the tools that are there, generate scenario questions for yourself using something like ChatGPT, and this note, notebook LM um, that you can use as well that will assist you in doing this and getting your mindset ready for that theory paper. Now let's quickly look where most marks are lost. And I made a note of this. First of all, marks disappear when you don't read carefully. And I always say, reading is a skill. You need to read carefully. Don't give half answers, okay? Full sentences, give us everything you have. Don't forget the examples. Now, many learners lose out on marks because of command words. They forget what is actually meant when the question says explain or evaluate or list to. Please. Read and then write out in full sentences. Now, just the opposite is true when we want to get marks. You get your marks when you have clear, logical, specific answers. Explain your reasoning. Give examples. So you're saying that the SSD is faster than the traditional hard drive. Why? Give a reason for your answer. Secure your quick wins in question one, two, and three. The multiple choice, the match, the column, the choose the correct term. And then with the bigger sections, you are simply showing your understanding. So please, when it comes to your exam, use your time wisely. Underline keywords in your questions. Just manage your time effectively, please. And you also want to check the mark allocation. If they're asking you a question and it's got two marks, that means there needs to be two distinct answers, two distinct items that they can mark to say, okay, there's one and there's the second one. And that's it, grade 10s. Please do check the description uh, underneath this video so you can go to the gizmo.ai for the flashcards with all your grade 10 work. So you can use those flashcards as well. You're going to use this video. There's a link to a playlist in here as well. And of course, my exam guidelines document all located in the description. And of course, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this with everyone because grade 10s, you know what? Marks aren't lost because you don't know. They're lost 
because you don't explain.